Okay, we continue with verses summarizing the parameters of the eight consciousnesses and we're still talking on the first five consciousnesses and hopefully we'll finish the first five consciousnesses today with a, with a simple summary. So, last time we said we go to the, um, the eighth uh, perspective, I think. How do the first five consciousnesses get to know and think about the perceived objects? How do, how do our first five consciences uh, know about our external world? So basically most of the knowledge is from three sources. Knowledge from direct veridical perception or knowledge from inference, uh, whether it's true or maybe true, maybe false. In other words, from postulations, from analysis, from um, inference. Uh, Third, knowledge from, fal from fallacious reasoning. So it's, if the inference is true, it becomes true. If it is false, it's, from, it's fallacious. Uh, and in the first, so the first five consciousnesses fit into the first one. Uh, uh, there's, there's a fourth one too. There's a fourth one. Knowledge from saints and trustworthy source. So the first five fall into knowledge from direct veridical perceptions. They know by actually seeing, listening, uh, tasting, so from uh, actual perception. So then the next perspective that we look at is how do we transform the first five consciousnesses into uh, enlightenment? spiritual transformation towards enlightenment. Now, to talk about that, we need to go back a little bit, uh, say, our consciousness is the conditioned mind. And then, the absolute enlightened mind is the nirvana, it's going to nirvanic mind. So that's the absolute uh, enlightened mind. So there are two minds, uh, they are distinct minds, but then they are the same mind. It's different, but then it's the same. Because one mind evolved from the other. But the, uh, the evolved mind, the final uh, result, is not the same as the beginning, the conscious, the conditioned mind. But they, you can say they are the same, but they, they, are, the, they, they are different. It's just like when you were young, when you were 18 years old, uh, before and then now you are 81 then you say am I the same person you're not the same person anymore now you're 81 uh, the time when you were 18 is, is a different person but then you say it is the same because the, that person is the same person uh, so the conditioned mind you don't blame the conditioned mind because it's through the conditioned mind that you arrive at the enlightened mind uh, it's different is the same. But certainly, when you look at the final result, they're not, they're not the same. One is the purified one, and the other is still the condition, the fallacious, uh, the uh, subjective one. All right. So, samsara, the retribution process, we are in samsara now. We're going through life and death. We're going through reincarnations. Uh, up to one life, we roll into the next life with our karmic energy. So we are in samsara. Uh, that, that's the Sanskrit language. Life and death, reincarnations. That's our retribution process too. Uh, that mainly occurs due to the ripening of the karmic seeds of the eight consciences uh, that we have. So they mislead us to attach and crave to all objects of the external world through perception via the first five consciousnesses and their interaction with the internal six consciousnesses. The seven consciousness believes in a self. You have that seven consciousness and attaches to the karmic seat of the eighth as its objects. Remember, we have the perceiving part and the part being perceived. 
the seven consciousness in you perceive all these karmic seeds of the eighth as its external objects. The eight consciousness, and then the first five, and then the sixth, and then the seven consciousness. So these are responsible for all the retribution. These consciousnesses are responsible for our zamzara. You have to be very careful with what you're doing. Um, in order to get out from this, you really have to practice, not just the conceptual understanding. If you don't really gear yourself intensively to the, to the practice, you just roll into it and then the next round of reincarnation, then you may lost yourself, uh, your true identity, and roll into the next round. We've all been suffering. Sometimes we, have, we may have temporary happiness, but we've all been suffering through. Sufferings in many ways. I hope you realize that this world is a world of suffering. Um, we're not being negative. We're not being subjective. It's a fact. Suffering is a fact. It's not a, it's not a postulation. It's not something that say, oh, you're negative. You're not positive. I'm positively understanding that suffering is prevalent in this world. I'm positively trying to remove suffering. I'm positively trying to understand this suffering so that I can get away from this suffering. Talking about it is not negative. But not talking about it, thinking that you're happy, and you, you, you can enjoy life, you can, you can do whatever you want, as long as it pleases your senses, you get into suffering more and more and more and more. Because you're, we are creating karmic energy. You don't know about it. You may not know about it. So, enlightenment requires an internal transformation of the consciousness into the great perfect wisdom. Tainted, subjective, conditioned mind. How to turn it into absolute enlightened mind, into nirvana. That's what the Buddha has successfully done. Uh, he already have finished up the retribution process and he wanted to tell us we can do the same thing by following the spiritual transformation. And uh, he's been telling us in all the, the Tripitaka, the Vinaya, the Apadama and the Sutra. But how many people are actually following them intensively, wholeheartedly? They're still enjoying themselves in what they call terminal, ter, ter, quote unquote, happiness. Um, most of this happiness, they think, is pleasurable happiness. The happiness derived from satisfaction of the senses. Or, or happiness derived from uh, movement of the hormones. Yeah, it's all hormones inside the body that moves around, that instigate around, and you think that's happiness. How do we do it? Spiritual transformation towards enlightenment. How about the first five consciousnesses uh, which that's what we're talking about. We still have to talk about in detail the sixth one, the seventh one, and the eighth one. Now, the, the first five are easier to understand. Uh, how do we transform the first five? First of all, by conceptual understanding. Second is application. Just by understanding it won't get you too much, won't get you anywhere. It gets you to put your first step on the path of, the, of practice. But if you don't practice it, you're just like a, uh, a professional student, always studying in a library. You study for your BA and then your, your master and then your post and your doc PhD and then your postdoc. All your lifetime is just studying. You're, 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 um, you are a, a professional seeker of conceptual understanding without walking it. In other words, you've been talking about going to Victoria, but you never take the ferry. You never start to drive. You can never get there. You're only talking about it on the map. You're only talking about it on the map. 
you never get there. And some people just satisfy themselves by just talking about it and trying to understand it. And some people go around looking for books that they put on the shelf. They put 100 books of Buddhism on the shelf and which one they have really finished in full and really follow it. And they put all kinds of videos. They go to all kinds of <laughs> trying to only conceptual understanding. What they want is just a conceptual understanding without actually practicing it. You have to apply it. So there's two parts to it conceptual understanding and application. And how, what is the conceptual understanding of it? By applying the Yogacara philosophy to everyday activities, we can replace subjective concepts with objective thinking about the consciousness. So your first conceptual understanding, you have to, you have to understand that your views, our views are tainted are all polluted, are all egoistic, our glasses are all uh, biased. You know, we have an internal commentator in us, and that internal commentator is, the, the constructs of that internal commentator is what? It's built according to your own karma, according to, built according to your own personality. Um, it, it, it's you, that internal commentator. You, you comment on everything subjectively according to what you think. And you never give up on that. And you continue to be like that. Uh, we, all of them are. Guided by precepts, samatha and vipassana, jie, ding, hui. Uh, guided by precepts, observation, confirmations of the precepts. So that's the reason why the more precepts you have, the more you will be guiding to the right path because you won't be creating new karma. If you don't have any precepts at all, in other words, you can kill, you can steal, you can have sexual misconduct, you can lie, you know, even though you meditate every day, you'll be too busy building up more and more karma. How can you get enlightenment? Some people, they practice three, four hours every day, but they continue to, to commit sexual misconduct, to be lying, to be stealing. You know, their, their, moral con their mo the morality is, is not getting any advancement, but they practice five or six hours per day. You think they will come up to a point that they get enlightened? They'll be too busy receiving a new form, new waves of retribution because of what they have built up in their, their, their karma. So it's very important that you have to, first of all, take your Vinaya. So whenever there's a, a novice monk, you know, you know what the, the teacher, the master would tell about novice monk? For the first five years, spend all your time in studying the Vinaya. Don't go out and preach. Oh, I know Buddhism. Don't go out to, to preach. It, because in your hidden um, personality, you're just looking for fame and reputation when you're preaching. You want to get praise that you're a good preacher. You want to get praise that you understand Buddhism. You are, and internally, you are, you're seeking, you're craving. But the Master said, spend your first five years in thoroughly understand the Vinaya and conform to the Vinaya. The more you conform to the precepts, the better monk you will be. You, the, the happier you will be. The, 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 you, more, you have more freedom. Some people think that by, by being bound by all these precepts, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, I can't do anything. By being restricted from doing all these unwholesome precepts, you'll be more free, you have more freedom. You're free from the bondage of karmic energy bounding you. You're free to practice. So that's extremely important. So guided by precepts, first of all. Uh, and so if you haven't really taken the three refuges, you don't even have the first precept. Some people have learned about this, uh, Buddhism for years. They haven't taken the, 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 the three refuges. Refuges under the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. That's the, that's the first precept. You, know, you haven't even taken that. Uh, and then, you have, of course, you haven't taken the five precepts. Abstain from killing, abstain from lying, abstain from intoxicants and sexual misconduct, abstaining from um, 
you know, etc., etc., et et the five precepts that you have to observe. And then you have to observe the ten precepts, then, you, then the, the really, uh, uh, the person who's striving for enlightenment, then they become a monk. They have 250 precepts to be, to conform to. And the nuns, uh, the bhikshuni, and the bhikshuni, the bhikshuni have 348 precepts uh, to conform to. And then they get onto their path of practice. So, precept, the samatha is concentration. Vipassana is wisdom. So they have to have the meditation and the wisdom. So precept, samatha, and vipassana. Jie, ding, hui, san, wo, lo, shi. We will reduce the burden of our retribution if we're guided by all these. Stop creating unwholesome karma nurture or build up wholesome karma and gradually reduce our attachment to self and craving. So our first lesson after we were guided by precepts in Samatha and Vipassana is to, to what gradually learning how to reduce, eliminate the self. That's what the Diamond Sutra in the second uh, chapter is talking about. Uh, Reduce, uh, gradually eliminate your ego, yourself, uh, the ego attachment, your craving. Everybody has that ego attachment. Some people are stronger than the others, and you may not know about it. You crave for something, you may not know about it. Uh, you're greedy for something, you may not know about it. That's been built in the ego. So conceptual understanding is absolutely important. Uh, but after having had the conceptual, uh, con conceptual understanding, you really have to apply it. How do we apply it? How do we practice it? We have to get into details, but let me give you just the, simp the simplified version of the transformation uh, according to the Yogacara approach, but we still have to, the application part, we still have to get in more and more and deeply into it. But we've been touching on the conceptual understanding. What is the confirmation? Transform the sixth consciousness into the wisdom of cognition. Transform the seventh consciousness into the wisdom of non-self. Transform the eighth consciousness into wisdom of great perfection of nirvana. Transform the first five consciousnesses into wisdom in helping all sentient beings in their final transformation. That really have to get into detail of it. So we've been studying, on the last one, the first five consciousnesses. And um, the final result to transform the first five consciousnesses into true wisdom. Um, the first five consciousnesses exist based on the existence of the eight consciousness. Now, this is quite important. Uh, the first five cannot exist without the eighth. So, the first five consciousness, final transformation, has to be achieved when the eighth consciousness is successful in, in achieving wisdom of perfection of nirvana. It sounds very complicated. I don't know what, I don't know if you know what I mean. We've been jumping into conclusion right now. Um, let me give you an example. When a practitioner practice and practice, changing the, changing the sixth consciousness in the wisdom of cognition, changing the seventh consciousness in the wisdom of non-self, and finally changing the eighth consciousness in the wisdom of great perfection of nirvana, then the first five consciousnesses will change into wisdom in helping all sentient being in the transformation. Why? Because when the Buddha achieved the great perfection of nirvana, then he has that ability to be reborn in many, many locations, many, many worlds, in many, many forms. So in other words, Avalokitesvara or all Buddhas can be reborn can be, born in, can be born in all the six reincarnations to help sentient beings. So in other words, some people translate the, the, the uh, finality of the, of the first five consciousness into what? 
into um, wisdom of successful performance in their uh, act in helping all sentient beings to become Buddha. So in other words, the, the, the first five consciousnesses will be successful only when the great perfection of divine wisdom is achieved and then he will be reborn in many places as Buddha, as Bodhisattvas, as Arahats, as in many, many places. He will be reborn in helping all sentient beings to transform into spiritual enlightenment. Uh, so, uh, the first five consciousnesses has to wait till the effect comes. Then, it will be transformed. All the other five will be transformed in the cause of it. But the last, the first five will be in the effect of it. This is difficult to understand. But anyway, uh, yo, I'm just giving you a summary right now. Uh, transforming in the effect, transforming in the cause, in the causation is different. Yeah, yeah. Transformation. Yeah, transformation. Cause and effect. Yeah. The first effect in the effect. So there's a saying, there's a saying, let me translate the saying. Liu Qi Yin Zhong Zhuan. The, the six consciousness, the Manu consciousness, and the Manas consciousness, the seven, they transform in the cause, causation, transform in the causation. And, and uh, um, ba, guo, shang, yuan, the first five consciousnesses and the eight consciousness finally, finally transform uh, in, in, in effect of it, in the effect. Yeah, yeah you understand? So that really, that, that's something very difficult to understand. Even for those who, who study Yogacara, it's difficult to understand, not easily underst understandable. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Exactly. You have to do the six first. You cannot get to the eighth and the five immediately. So it, it, gradually you have to start from the six and seven. You change the six and seven, then the, the, the five and, and eight will be changed. So there's certain procedures in doing it. Yeah. So you really have to start with the six. The six is absolutely important. The six is very phenomenal. The six is really wild. It's going wild. You have to put the six under control first. So you have to change your six. Changing your six is difficult, but it's interesting. I don't know what you find it interesting. Uh, if you find that the practice is interesting. You're on your way to Nirvana. You find that the practice is boring. I better go eating. I better go playing. I better go doing something else that sets my, my senses. Then you, you can't get anywhere. You have to be interested in it. Some people look at it. Oh, why, why, why would I have to study this? You know? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's tied to your point of view, your internal commentator, all those karmic energies that you have had. So you have to, you have to change. The six is difficult to change. Right. Yeah. When you can change your six, the seven is gradually changing. When the six and seven is all changed, your eighth come into place. It's you know, ready to be changed. And when the eighth is ready, is successfully changing, then the first five will be going out to to enlighten all sentient beings in all kinds of forms, in all kinds of transformed bodies. Because that's the reason why we are lucky. We, we, still have, we still can see the transformed bodies of the Buddha. The, Buddha, the transformed body of the Buddha, 2,600 years ago, we, we, they could still see the Buddha. Because the Buddha has achieved the final great perfection of Nirvana, and he was at the same time doing the wisdom in helping all sentient beings in their transformation. Finally. 
So, um, I have finished the first five uh, consciousnesses in, 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 in simplicity. And we ha the reason why we have to study these is we have to know our consciousness. The first five are easy to understand because um, they are more simple, very simple. The sixth is very complicated. If you can deal with the six, which is the manager of all your senses, then you're on your way. You're on your way to annihilation of the self.